Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to this broadcast um, session where we're looking at Christ, the tree of life. I am specifically excited about this session. Uh, in the previous broadcast, as I was doing it, I could feel like pulsating in my spirit, my soul, and my body. I could feel the life of God. And I know that you will definitely be impacted by this life and your life will be transformed by it. Can we pray? Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we bless your name. What a privilege to come. What a privilege to fellowship with you. What a privilege to partake of the word of life. What a privilege to eat the word of life. We open our spirit, our souls and bodies to receive from you. Your word says the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And so we receive it. We decree and declare that your word gains an entrance into our heart. It penetrates, it shatters every doubt and unbelief. We open ourselves to eat of Christ, who is the tree of life, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm Prophet Esfani, a quick reading, and I'm going to be teaching on uh, the tree of life. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be looking at the life mandate and the river of life. Uh, so, we'll start our Bible reading by looking at John chapter 10, verse 10. I call it the life mandate because for me, this is one of the chief keynote uh, words of Christ that we should not toy with. John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it abund abundantly. So the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he, Jesus, came so that we'll have life, or he comes so that we'll have life and have it in abundant. Um, for me, this depicts the mandate of Christ. If you want to tell me uh, that what is the mission statement of Christ, I will give you two scriptures. The first one is John 10.10, 10, where he said, I am come so that you have life. And have it in abundance. And then the second one is told, uh, 1 John 3, 8. Where he says that for this purpose was the Son of Man made manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So I'm of the opinion that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. And of course we know that part of the works of the devil he came to destroy was death. So uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 said of the Christ that he hath abolished death and he has brought immortality and life to light by the gospel. Hallelujah. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And we are told in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the works of the devil is to steal, is to kill, and to destroy. So every operation of the enemy, you know, he, he comes to steal from you, he comes to uh, destroy you, and it eventually it culminates in death. Now, what Christ did in 1 John 3, 8, he came to destroy the works of the devil, came to terminate that operation of the theft. He came to terminate that operation of the thief. He came to terminate that operation of darkness. He came to bring, to destroy totally, and I tell you the truth, Christ was successful. When he declared that it is finished, he finished the first week phase of the destruction of the devil. When he was made sin, when he became poor, when he, the chastisement of our peace came upon him, when he descended to the grave and was there for three days and three nights in combat with the devil, he dealt with another phase of destroying the works of the devil. When he ascended and took his blood to the, to the uh, uh, heavenly sanctuary and placed it, you know, uh, at the throne, you know, at the mercy seat, he concluded another part of his work. And even right now, he ever lives to make intercession for us. Not just that, but the Bible said, if we were saved from by his uh, uh, by his death, that we will much more would we be saved by his life. So his death, his burial, his resurrection, and ascension did something. And right now, he's living. He ever lives. His life releases life to us. So Christ came on a mission. Christ came to bring life and that in abundance. And he came to abolish death and to bring immortality to life. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Now remember, we said in our previous broadcast that Christ is the tree of life. He's the bread of life. He's the word of life. He's the prince of life. He's the life-given spirit. He's the resurrection and the life. If the Bible calls us the trees of the Lord, the planting of the Lord, then Christ is that tree. 
And every time we eat from him, we take the word of life, we partake of the communion, and we're going to see shortly entering into the river of life. We are partaking of the fruit of the tree of life. And so life must find expression in our brains, in our minds, in our emotions, in our affections, in our inter in our interaction, in the way we 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 are now social life in every aspect of our life. There must be expression of life because we are one with him who is life. Glory to God. I tell you, I sense the anointing very strongly. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, it said to that that we are joined to the Lord. We are well, to him that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So if the Lord is the tree of life, then we are joined to the tree of life. We are joined to life. Remember, he said in John chapter uh 15, that he's the vine and we are the branches. He's the vine and we are the branches. He's the head and we are his body. So the head and the body, they are one. The vine and the branches, they are one. We are one with the tree of life. We are one with the life-giving spirit. And I go further to say that we are made, we are recreated in life, recreated in Christ Jesus. We are recreated after the order of the life-given spirit. Glory to God. So life is available. So we look at the mandate of Christ. He came so that we will have life and have it in abundance. Now, so far it to say at this point, and by now you should be used to it, that when you go through Genesis um, 1, 2, and 3, you will see that Adam sinned against man, Adam uh, against God, Adam transgressed against God, and as a result of that, man was plunged into an era of death. The Bible said death reigned till Moses. Moses brought the law and, you know, when you obey the law, the law has a way of putting on hold the operation of death for a while until Christ came. So um, the disobedience of Mr. and Mrs. Adam plunged man into an era of, of death. Sin opened the door for death to come. But you see, we don't, we are not, we are not um, uh, emphasizing that because the last Adam in First Corinthians 15, we see the operation of the first Adam and the second Adam the, and the second man with the last Adam. We see that Christ came to counteract and do a better work, not with the blood of bulls and goats, with his own blood. He came. So just as Adam disobeyed God and death came, Christ obeyed God and life came. So the Bible said in, in Romans chapter 6, if we are planted in the likeness of his death, we are also planted in the likeness of his resurrection. If you take Romans chapter 5, Romans 6, 7, 8, 9, I tell you, you'll be so blessed just by reading it. You will see where it describes how sin came, how death opened the do how sin opened the door for death, and how all of creation died through the disobedience of one man, Adam. And then he now tells us that another man, the last Adam came, who is Jesus Christ, and obeyed God fully. And then his righteous act and obedience opened the life gate. So that life gate that was shut in Genesis 1, where man was driven from the, from the, from the Garden of Eden so that man could not access the tree of life, Christ came to open up that life gate. And so he says in John chapter 14, verse 7, that I am the way. He's the way to life. I am the truth truth and I am the life. Hallelujah. He's the life and he's the way to life. You can't assess life outside of Christ. You can't go uh, and get the full benefit of life. And we're not just looking at human life here. We're looking at eternal life. We're looking at the life of the Father. We are looking at that eternal life that First John uh, uh, 5, 1 to 5 tells us. That eternal life that was with the Father. We are looking at that life. That is the life that Jesus Christ came to give to us. And he doesn't want us to have it, you know, in trickles. He said he came so that we'll have life and we'll have it in abundance. Can you just pause right now and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your life mission. Thank you for life that we have. The Bible says, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have life. So we are not perishing. We believe in him. We have life and we have it in abundance. By faith, we receive that life. We receive that life in our spirit. We receive that life in our souls and we receive that life in our bodies. Can you say that? I believe in Jesus, therefore I receive life. I believe in Christ, therefore I have life. Glory to God. The life of God is pulsating in my spirit. My spirit is quickened and energized by the life of Christ. My body is quickened and energized 
baptized by the life of Christ. My cells are quickened. Yes, the life of Christ shrivels death. If there's any tumor, whether it's cancerous, any growth, anything in our body that is not life, by this life we command it to be shriveled to death in the name of Jesus. So Christ came on a life mission. He came so that we'll have life. He came with a new era, the era of death. He stopped that era. When John the Baptist stood in John chapter 1 verse 29 and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What he was doing was that he was declaring, he was announcing a new regime. is a regime of life. He was opening the life gate. He was saying, I've become the portal. I've become the way. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that he consecrated a new and living way through the veil of his flesh. When he went, when the veil in the temple was rent in twain, in twain, when they struck his back, you know, when they beat him, what he was doing was that through that operation of the chastisement that he received, the scourgings he received, the beatings he received on, on, on his head, the crown of thorns, uh, stripes on his body, on uh, his side was pierced, his hand, all he was doing was that he was creating, he was paving, you know, they were tearing the veil of his flesh and he was opening the new and living way, not the new and death way, the new and living way, glory to God. He was making a, a, a life available to us and also creating the path of life. So there is a path of life. Yes, there is a path of life. There's a path that you will walk and it will be sure and you will know that it will end in life just as there is a way that you will take and the Bible said it ends in death. There's a path you will take that path is in Christ. It is the path of life and it is accessible to us. So John the Baptist declared a new regime. He declared, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. When that Lamb, which is Christ, when his blood was shed, you know, on the cross of Calvary, uh, the Bible said he made peace through the blood of his cross. You see that in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. When that work was done and he gave up the ghost, he consecrated a new way for us. He opened the door to life for us. So I want to say that the work of Christ, which is to abort the work of the devil, to abolish death, which is to destroy the works of the devil, was a perfect and complete work. Hallelujah. And so I, can, I will make some bold statement. Number one, that it is possible to be so full of life that you can never die. It is possible to walk like Enoch walk. It is possible to be carried by the chariot of fire like Elijah. It is possible to keep eating of the tree of life and never die. Have you imagined the children of Israel, how they ate manna for 40 years? And the Bible said they were preserved. There was no feeble among them. You know, uh, uh, their clothes grew on their body. Uh, they were sustained for 40 years because they ate manna and uh, some calls it angels food. So if they ate manna and they were that preserved in life, how much more us, how much those, more, those of us that are partaking of the word of life, hallelujah, we're partaking of this life and so we will live forever. It is possible to be so full of life that you can never die. It is possible for the life of God in you and in me to swallow up death. Hallelujah. He said, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Through our belief we receive eternal life. In 1 John 5, 12, he said, he that hath the Son hath life. 1 John 5, 11, he said, that life is in the Son. And so when we receive Jesus, Jesus comes into our heart. Christ is life in us. We have life. We have life in abundance. Hallelujah. We have the life of God and we have that life in abundance. As we partake of the word of life, as we eat the word of life, as we partake of the communion, we fellowship with life. I tell you the truth, it is possible for the life of God in us to shrivel death. It is possible for the life of God in us to swallow death. It is possible for us to be so filled with life that death will be a thing of the past. Hallelujah. Now, it is possible to live the abundant life. Christ's life mandate is so that we will have life and have it in abundance. We can take of the tree of the Jews from the vine. We can partake of the fruit of the tree. We can eat it. He said, your words were found and I did eat it. When we take the word of, of, of God, when we are reading it, we are studying it, we are confessing it, what we are doing is that we are eating it. 
He said, your words were found and I did eat it and it became the rejoicing of my heart. Every time we are partaking of God's word, fellowshipping God's word, we are eating, we are eating life. And the same life that is in the vine, listen and listen well, the same life that is in the vine is the same life in the, in the branches. If you take the tree trunk now and you cut it, you will see the sap, it will flow out. You will see the juice will flow out. If you take the same leaf or the fruit and you cut it, there's that same juice that will flow out. It is the life of the vine that flows to the branches and then to the, to the fruit. That life is in Christ. Christ in us. Glory to God. That is the mystery. Apostle Paul said, this mystery, oh God, Cardo Saint Abadia, this mystery was hidden in ages. And what is the mystery? It was hidden for ages. Nobody could discern what it was. And all of a sudden, God uncapped it. God unsealed it. And this mystery is the mystery of Christ in us. And so if we say that Christ is the tree of life, then we are saying that that tree of life is now inside of us. Hallelujah. We are one with the tree of life. We are one with life. So it is possible to be so full of life that you can never die. It is possible for the life of God in us to swallow up death. And as I declare the word, let death be swallowed up in our bodies in every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus. It is possible to live the abundant life. Life and life in its fullness is possible. That is what Jesus Christ came to give to us. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 depicts him as the last Adam who is the life given spirit. And we are told in John 3 16 that whosoever believes. So all you need to receive this life and receive it in abundance is just to believe. He said with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. You believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, you receive that life. He told Martha in John 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, your brother will live again. And Martha said, at the resurrection, thinking that resurrection is a day. But Jesus Christ said, no, it is not a day. I am the resurrection. So if Christ is living inside of us, it means that the resurrection is inside of us. It means, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now let me leave the resurrection because I'll talk in it in the next talk about it in the next broadcast. I want to look at the life. He is the life. The life is inside of us. Can you say it with me? That life life, eternal life is inside of me. The life of God is inside of me. The life of God is actively at work in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in the name of Jesus, let everything that is death, let every tumor, let every pain, let every darkness be swallowed up by this life in the name of Jesus. Christ came so that we will have life and have it in abundance. He is the author of life. We see that in Acts chapter 3 verse 15 where he's referred to as the prince of life. And then in John chapter 5 verse 26, the Bible said, As the father had life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life. So he's the tree of life. You can't find life anywhere else. If you are looking for life, don't go to any place. Life is in Christ. He is the tree of life. And we have access to that life. The life that, uh, that the last Adam lost in Romans chapter 5 verse 14, we see that Christ came to reinstate it and to make that life available to us. So Christ is the tree of life. And we can assess that life. That life is available to us. We can partake of that life anytime, any day. I tell you the truth is a choice. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 that I have placed before you life or, and death. Choose life. Make a choice for life. Make a choice for life. How do you choose life? By your words. Proverbs chapter uh, uh, Psalm 16, verse 11, rather, it says, uh, you will show me the path of life in your presence. So the path of life is, is, is seen, is revealed in the presence of God. When you become a presence-centered person, when you spend time in fellowship with the Word, when you spend time in, in uh, um, 
fellowship with the Holy Ghost, when you spend time in the presence of God, the path of life is unveiled to you more and more. As you spend time in the Word of God, the Word of God, we said it in our previous podcast, that the Word of God is the Word of life. So the Word of God is the Word of life. You want to be deliberate and intentional about it. Job 28, 7 talks, reveals a path that nobody knows. The fowl have not seen it, the birds of the air have not seen it, and all of that. But that life, that way, that path has been revealed to us. Jesus said in John 14, 7, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So he is the way to life. He is the reality of life and he is the life. He is the way to life. He is the path of life and he is the truth of life. Life is found in Christ and we can assess that life. Hallelujah. That life is not hidden to us. All we need to do is to make a choice. He said, I've made place before you life and death. Choose. How do you choose? By your words. In Proverbs chapter 18, 20 to 22. Proverbs 18, 20 to 22. It says that we are, we are snared by the words of our mouth. We are delivered by our words. He said, we'll be satisfied by the, by the, by the fruit of our lips. That means that when we take God's word and we speak it, so back to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Attend to my words. Incline thine ears to my sayings. Put them in the midst of your heart. Don't let them depart from your mouth. They are life. Every time you speak God's word, it becomes life to your circumstances, life to your situation, life to your bones, life to everything that has to do with you. God's word is life and that life is available to us. Hallelujah. We can lay hold on life. We can walk in life. We can receive life and walk in the fullness of life. Life is available. Glory to God. So you make a choice. Of life by speaking life. And the word, uh, you know, he said, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life. What are you speaking? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Are you speaking not when you're in church and you are confessing, but when you go out? And it could be very, very salient. Uh, today I was doing something just before the broadcast. Uh, and I was a bit tired. And so uh, one of my peers was communicating with me and she said, and I said, okay, I'll just do this and this because I'm tired. I don't have the strength for that. When I finished saying it, the Lord rebuked me and said, if you keep confessing that you don't have the strength, your strength will deplete. If you just keep confessing tiredness, you will be tired. Now, that's not saying that I should not rest. That's not saying that I should not eat well. No, but you see, the Bible said in Mark eleven twenty three that we will have what we say. So if I keep declaring that I'm tired, I don't have the strength for it, I will not have it. But to say, let the weak say I'm strong. So that's how we make a choice for life. Make a choice for life by the words of our mouth. What are you speaking? You speak strength. We declare I'm strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in my inner life, in my inner man. That's how we eat of the tree of life. I declare that, you know, resurrection power is actively at work in me. That's how we partake of life. I declare that I'm energized. I have more than enough power and strength to do all the Lord will have me do. That is how we eat of the tree of life. So death and life are in the power of the thong. He said, I place before you life and death. Choose. Make a choice. Be more deliberate about your words. Even when you are joking, don't say, oh, that tickles me to death. No, that's speaking death. Don't say that. Oh, I'm tired. I just feel like dying. No, don't say that. That's death. We speak life. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. So we say, we are strong. Hallelujah. We are alive. Hallelujah. Jesus came so that we'll have life. And so we declare by faith, we have life and we have it in abundance. Hallelujah. The life of God is actively operational in us. The life of God is, is releasing life, strength to our bones, to our marrows, to our hearts, to every aspect of our beings. It is filled with life. We have life. We have life in abundance. Can you just declare it? We have the life of God. 
dwell in us. We partake with fellowship with life. We make a choice for life. Kari Sango Bokori Baseya. Oh yes, we receive life in abundance. We were crucified with him. Nevertheless, we live yet not us, but Christ lives in us. And the life we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God. Christ of God who loved himself and gave himself for us. So I was dead but now I am alive. Not I but Christ. Christ lives in me. Life is in me. Life in my spirit. Life in my soul. Life in my finances. Life when I go out. Life when I come in. I am filled with the life of God. I have the sword and I have life. Glory to God. Now receive that life. Receive that life. Receive that life. Receive life. In the name of Jesus, Christ has abolished death. And so we stand in agreement with the word of God. For he said, can two work together? I said, they be agree. We agree with God's word that death has been abolished in the name of Jesus. We curse sickness and infirmity. Die in the name of Jesus. We speak to that death situation. We say, dry up in the name of Jesus. And we speak to dry bones. We say, leave, come alive. Be filled with the life of God. Come into new expression of the spirit of God. We receive life in abundance in Jesus' name. Amen.